what's going on everybody give you all a minute to jump in here and hang out i'm gonna cut and light and have a cigar with all of you today happy friday hope you're all doing well Make sure everything's good to go on here. There we go. What's up, everybody? Go ahead and throw, jump in the comments. Val, what's going on? Hope you're doing well today. Jason Martin, yo. So I figured I would jump on and smoke a cigar that I got a couple months ago in my Luxury Cigar Club core box. It is the Donnelly Honduras Tobacco, The Clown. Ooh, and I almost got it to focus. My camera hates me. But it's the clown's the barber pole. And so I figured I'd hang out with y'all on this Friday and light it up. And so here I am. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a good day. Hope Friday is going well and you guys get to enjoy a good weekend. Sorry, I know the lighter probably sounds really loud there next to the microphone. And let me know, can you guys hear me okay? The microphone's a little bit further away just based on the chair I'm sitting in. I want to make sure you guys can hear me all right. Get this lit up here. And just hang out. So initial flavor notes. Some woodiness. Sitting and smoking a La Historia, North Carolina. Uh, waiting for the fight at 11 p.m. Ugh, <laughs> you got some time to wait, brother. Uh, there's a long way until 11 p.m. tonight for the fight. Oh, flight. I was like, oh, maybe there's a fight tonight. Oh, for the flight. Oh, bro, that's a long time to sit and wait. I would, I would go through... A couple different sticks. I would go through multiple, multiple cigars actually, waiting. Yeah, flight. I, yeah, you just corrected me. I took off my glasses. Just so everybody knows, I usually wear glasses because my eyes are that wonderful now. But then if I do that here and look, actually, you know what? That's not too bad. Maybe I'll be able to. Re I can read. The, yeah, that clearly says flight. I'll leave on, these on because if I go like that, you'll see the monitor reflecting and all those different things. It is what it is. Oh, well. I'm going to leave them on so you guys, well, so I can read your comments. So initial light up on the uh, Donnelly Honduras Tobacco, the clown. This is the barber pole. So it's um, Toro size, some woodiness, some cream, a um, little bit of leather. Oh, I appreciate it, Jason. Valley, you smoking anything right now? Good smoke output. Retro Hale makes the woodiness much stronger. Little bit of spice, definitely not spicery. And if you know me at all, you know I enjoy coffee. Since, well, I roast coffee. So, I'm having some coffee, because it's 10.20 here, so it's still the morning. But I want to jump on and hang out with you guys, see what y'all have been up to. And if you're uh, just jumping in, joining right now, I'm smoking the Donnelly Honduras Tobacco, the clown, from my Luxury Cigar Club box. I believe this came in March, actually, and I haven't gotten to it yet. I said I was going to review it, and then... I've gotten some other reviews. I was finishing up the drink debate uh, series and some different things, and I thought, you know what, I uh, I got to jump in there and smoke it. I've heard quite a bit about it. More than I see, the new house is treating you well. Facebook user, I'm not sure who Facebook user is, but good morning. Uh, welcome to you also, and uh, yes, it is treating me well. But I've got a coffee. Um, custom blend that I did for Cigar Club, Shadow Smokers Legion, that's the after show blend there uh, that I am having today. Anthony, what's going on Anthony Giannis? Hope you're doing well, long time no talk, long time no see, good to see you on here. 
And uh, yes, the new house is treating uh, my wife and boys uh, and I very well. We are loving it. Uh, been in class for work all week, and you know what, I can actually throw these up if I was smart. Been in class for work all week in South Carolina, they let out early, and of course I have a very late flight home. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, that is not fun, sitting around an airport is not my idea of fun. But you said you were smoking a cigar, a La Historia, which is a great stick, uh, E.P. Carrillo. Um, so are you just hanging out outside smoking a cigar then? Not yet. When you have plenty of cigars, well, then it makes it a chore to pick one. Maybe I'll just grab one and see what happens. You know, Val, that's a great idea. Grab a cigar, jump on here, and, and we'll go from there. What's up, Tim? Facebook user Anthony, I don't know if that's still you. Maybe it is. Um, I don't know. But if right above where the video is, there should be a link that says click here, and it's um, streamyard.com slash Facebook. You click on that, it'll give uh, StreamYard access to use your Facebook profile name, and then I will know who you are. Uh, Jason said, hanging out around Charlotte. Oh, there you go. So you're just hanging out, waiting for your flight. That makes sense. That way you're not stuck at the airport through the security checkpoint and, frankly, held hostage at the airport, which is never fun. So, see some people are jumping in here. Jump in, check in. Let me know who's hanging out with me. I am smoking from the March... Uh, well, here it goes. There you go, Val. From the March Luxury Cigar Club Core Box, I've got the uh, the Clown from Donnelly Honduras Tobacco. It's the Barber, barber Pole. It's not the Double Maduro. Uh, and so far, it's doing pretty well. The burn actually is pretty straight. Nothing to complain about at all. And I just figured I'd hang out with everybody on a Friday and uh, see what you're all up to. Like Val said, well, here it goes. And the pick is James Irvin. Yes, these bands are, I mean, just beautifully done. They are a piece of art, and the camera doesn't do it justice. There's just, like, gold embossing and the picture of the clown and everything there, and it wraps all the way around. You can see this doesn't hug the cigar tightly, but I think that's awesome the way that it was all designed. And Val says, the choice is the Fat Bottom Betty. I have not had the Fat Bottom Betty. I haven't had any in the um, Deadwood line, actually. Um, Facebook user, no, it, it says better, but it's not yet. So, I would love to say it's better, but it's not. <laughs> Jason Martin, nice. I Meaning, nice choice for Val, I'm assuming. So what are you guys up to? What do you got planned for the weekend? Uh, my family and I are actually going to be house-sitting for a family friend of ours. Uh, they're uh, on vacation, and so we're going to go and check out their place. They've got um, a nice pad, uh, and uh, Leather Rose is my favorite of that line from what Jason is saying here. Uh, and so we're going to be hanging out there, uh, checking in. They've got a couple dogs, so checking in, house-sitting for them, doing all that stuff. Um, and the cool thing is, is uh, he is a cigar smoker, and he goes, Tim, help yourself to anything in my humidor except what's in the boxes. Okay, copy that, no problem. I uh, will happily oblige uh, respectfully and um, check out his selection, which is very nice. Set up by the pool, set out in the jacuzzi. That'll be nice. But what plans do you guys have for the weekend? What are you guys up to? anything special going on I know we've got I've got my Saturday morning men's Bible study going on tomorrow morning and then uh, my son's little league game and some different things but uh, yeah just gonna be a relaxing weekend which will be very nice uh, it's sweet but I like it with my mocha frappe mocha frappuccino there you go hey to each their own I drink my coffee black it is what it is I think that's how it was intended but you know what just like cigars if you enjoy it a certain way, then enjoy it the way that you like it. Yeah, so so far, cigars, woody, leather, a little bit of cream. Leather is not very pronounced, mostly wood and cream, a little bit of spice, 
more like a baking spice than anything else. Um, but I'm enjoying it so far. I gotta give a shout out to my cigar review brother, Vic Evans, High Desert Man. Got this hat when I hung out with him, gosh, probably about a month ago now. Man, time flies. And uh, yeah, so I figured I'd, I'd rep Vic Evans. And if you guys, he doesn't put out a whole lot of content lately just with uh, what he's been doing with work and family time and everything. But if you guys are not following High Desert Man on YouTube, you absolutely should be because Vic is a great guy. He's honest. He's no sugarcoating. If he likes a cigar, he'll tell you. If he doesn't like something about it, he'll be honest and he'll tell you. And I love that because that's, that is the same, you know, MO that I have. If I don't like it, I'll tell you. And if I like it, I'll tell you why I like it. Um, and it's as simple as that. And that's really what cigar reviews should be about. Uh, let's see here. Anthony Janis, nothing but early morning, uh, nothing but early morning work Saturday and Sunday. Ash Head Cigar Junkie TV. Carson, my brother, what's going on? Hope you're doing well, guys. If you're not following Ash Head, I'm sure you are. He is growing and doing great. Uh, great reviews. Got his own unique flair. And he, here's one of the things, and I've talked about it before. Um, I do my reviews, and it's nubworthy or not. His is nubworthy or nah. And in the cigar community, as reviewers, sometimes there tends to be, for whatever reason, you know, well, I reviewed this first, or why did you review that, or why did you say this, or why did you do that? We're all the community. We're all here to support each other. We're all here to help the community grow and be a community. And, uh, I mean, Carson and I, you know, um, talk every once in a while, and he's just a good brother, good guy, good reviewer, uh, and there's no, like, turf war or anything, and it's it's just awesome. I love that. That's what it should be about. Val says, going to visit Cigar Lounge tomorrow, and two, ooh, two on Sunday. Good for you. Jason, I would like to be Martina Maya, but in a rental car. <laughs> oh, I would be like Martina Maya, but in a rental car. Yeah, right? There you go. In the rental car. Anthony says, I agree with you about Vic. Yes, Vic is a good guy. I love that guy. He's a good brother in the Lord, and just an all-around solid guy. It was it was great to hang out with him, but it was a bummer only getting to hang out for a couple hours just because he was on his way up to uh, Northern California, and I was just a pit stop on the way, but it was awesome to uh, to hang out and meet him face-to-face -face for the first time. So for those of you that haven't checked it out already, uh, I did release a video this week where it was a cigar review, but it was mostly focused on a pipe collection that I was given by my father-in-law. Um, I don't even know the number of pipes. I didn't count. There's probably 15 pipes or so in that collection. Uh, some of them are very, very unique and ornate. So um, please go and check out that video uh, if you're into pipes at all and just see what there is in there. A lot of Meerschaum pipes uh, and all of that. And so, um, it was a fun video to shoot and it was fun getting to look through all the different pipes that are there. And so, um, James Irvin, yes, you will be in Phoenix in September for the SSL meetup, which is awesome. I'm still planning on being out there myself, which would be awesome and exciting. So that'll be good. Jason Martin said that is a nice collection. I appreciate it, Jason. Uh, I know when watching the live chat, the live comments on the replay, um, with some people that were watching, uh, and it may have been you, Jason, I'm not sure who it was uh, off the top of my head now, uh, that said, uh, no, it was Stogie Hound, I think, uh, that said, I hope Tim realizes uh, that he's got, um, I think it's a, a valuable collection there. Uh, and, and I don't know the value of pipes. I have honestly never smoked a pipe, but I want to get into it, and that was the initiation, the catalyst for the conversation with my father-in-law about it. Oh, nice, James, that you got your tickets today, or technically yeah, technically today still our time because you're in Germany. Um, but uh, I think it's still today. But anyways, um, but I was talking with him and I was just like, hey, this is, um, you know, really cool that you've got all these. What would you think if uh, one of the briar woods and one of the, the nice, you know, smooth, round uh, wooden bowl uh, pipes that were in the collection if I could take them, get them cleaned up and use them because I'd really like to try out smoking pipes uh and um nice very cool val thank you i appreciate that uh anthony bought my first pipe a couple weeks ago a meerschaum corn cob uh, acorn style very nice 
Carson, that, that was Stogie Helm with the pipe comment. Great pipes, by the way. Thank you, Ashad. Yeah, Carson, I know that you were on there with him commenting back and forth. I was not able to be on the premiere yesterday just with scheduling conflicts. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so you were on there, and I appreciated that. That's awesome. James, uh, yep, uh, you got Friday morning, me evening. There you go. Um, but I was talking to him. I said, hey, can I take a couple of these? Would you mind, since they're just sitting here, go and get them cleaned up, get them checked out. There's a place here in Southern California called the Refuge Cigar Lounge. Um, and they have a pretty extensive pipe collection. In fact, maybe when I take them in, I'll do sort of a, a vlog style video and go in there and, um, and see what they have to say about the pipes. Um, in my head as a joke, I kind of went to like, oh, it would be fun to do it like I'm walking into uh, Pawn Stars, you know, and, or the, what was it, Antiques Roadshow. What do you have? What do you think the value is? Blah, blah, this. But maybe that's just too corny, and actually it is too corny, so I won't do that. But go and get them checked out. Go and see what, um, what if they know anything about the age on some of them, if there's any kind of indication as to the age, you know, maybe who made them, you know, all that kind of stuff. It would just be fun. I don't know if they can even find that information, if they know it. I have no clue, but I'm going to take them in at least and get them checked out, um, maybe get an, an estimated value of what, you know, each of the pipes are and uh, then get a couple of them cleaned up, buy some pipe tobacco, and go from there. Um, yes, James, I expected the, the fun poking from you. It's kind of corny that you thought about that. Yes, James, it absolutely is. Welcome to my mind. Um, but so I did that review yesterday, did that review on the Romacraft Aquatane Mode 5. It's a 5 by 50 You can go and watch the video on the blend and all of that um, and see whether I thought it was nubworthy or not. Oh, excuse me. Clearly, I need to drink more coffee. <clears throat> um, and for anybody that's not aware, with TurboJet Coffee, there is a new custom blend called the Family Blend that is out now on the website. It is available. Uh, it is a custom blend that I did for myself it, when I launched um, when I launched TurboJet Coffee. I wanted to have something that was like my own coffee that I drank, customized with the different coffee beans that I have. And this was the blend that ended up coming about from it. Uh, it's called the Family Blend. It's multiple different regions, uh, and it's just a really, in my opinion, and, and my brother who orders the coffee and drinks it, and some other people, it's just a very well-balanced, smooth, uh, flavorful coffee. So the fam Family Blend is available. It's on there. And, uh, and yeah, so if you are a coffee connoisseur, I know, Jason, you have ordered uh, coffee before. Um, James, uh, I don't remember if coffee went oh, I know Albert bought some um, and has gotten some but I don't know if you've had a chance to try it or how that's worked out or maybe in September we'll get you <clears throat> get you set up with a couple bags of coffee um, but that's available and, and you know if you're a coffee drinker it's whole bean only uh, and everything is roasted completely by hand uh, not even like okay the hands push the buttons on the roaster I am stirring literally stirring the pot of beans every single time I roast a batch of coffee. I've got a couple batches. Um, I've got quite a few pounds to roast today and get taken care of. Um, but if you're interested in coffee at all, it's there. Jason, I miss the winter blend. Well, I've got good news for you and bad news for you. The bad news for you is I don't have it in yet. The good news is that will be coming back this winter. Um, in fact, Vic Evans, that was a big winner for him. The last that I had um, here available when I met up with him. I gave him what I had. I roasted it and gave it to him um, because he really enjoyed it. Um, it was like half a pound that I had left, and so I gave that to him. Um, but the winter blend will be coming back this winter. Uh, I am also working on another custom blend that uh, is going to be coming out for the winter time. I'm working on test blends right now and sampling that and seeing what's going to work the best for you know the blending uh, and how the coffee is going to turn out. So stay tuned because there will be a new um, Christmas season uh, TurboJet blend. I will still have the Christmas blend that I, the Christmas cheer blend that I had last year, but I will um, be having a new custom house Christmas blend, if you will. Uh, James, I won't get any until September. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Yes, you did buy a mug though, and it is sitting there. Unless Albert shipped it to you, it is sitting there waiting for you, um, which I appreciated. Um, and that's awesome. So that's sort of an update with TurboJet Coffee. What's going on there?
Got to make sure I keep the cigar lit, you know. Ash holds, ash holds on pretty well. Not too bad. The burn's gotten just a little wave to it. And now that I'm into uh, it more where I've gotten through, uh, almost through the first third, I'd say the flavor's staying pretty consistent. It's got that, that coffee, a little bit of cream, leather, uh, a little bit of spice. Um, that's an interesting note. Hmm, like a toasted, like a toasted peanut. Interesting, that's good. So sort of a toasted peanut, note that I'm picking up now, maybe it's transitioning into the second, third with how large the band is on this. I mean, I've tapped the ash off a couple times, so I'm probably inch and a half, two inches into this. It's a Toro size, so it's a six by 52, I believe. As it's starting to go up. <laughs> James, I might need a new mug. Albert has cooties. Well, you know what? That's entirely possible. You know your brother quite well, so... If he's got cooties, you'd be the one to know. But hey, pick up a new mug. Why not? And then... Albert, or James, did you get the, of course now I'm calling you Albert, did you get the SSL mug or did you get the standard? I don't remember which one you got. I want to say it was the SSL mug, but I don't remember. Yeah, getting strong toasted note, toasted nuts on the cigar now. How many of you guys have had the clown? Let me know if you've had the clown barber pole um, with the, uh, it's a, um, Maduro and uh, not Candela, Corojo. I don't either. I don't know either. Well, I don't know which one you got. So I want to say it was the SSL one. And then I think Albert ended up buying one for himself when he ordered coffee a separate time. So maybe you're safe. Maybe he hasn't. No, he's probably used it. But how many of you guys have had uh, the clown, if you have, let me know. It's, again, it's not the double Maduro. This is the Barber Pole. Uh, and like I said, I believe it is the um, Corojo Maduro Barber Pole. Great. I mean, nice straight burn on it. Yeah, I just, you know, did sort of a touch-up relight. It wasn't even a touch-up, but a relight. One little dip there. But the burn's doing well. Sounds like you know my brother well. Yeah, I, 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 I'd say I know him pretty well. He's a good guy, but I know him. I know him decently well. Absolutely, James. And I bet you're sitting there chuckling and laughing right now because of that. So yes. <clears throat> so I asked this last time, and um, I actually was really uh, blessed and had uh, another fellow cigar reviewer. Good buddy Frankie Rodriguez with the Bakersfield Gentleman send me a uh, little care package, a little cigar bomb in the mail with some different cigars. Um, quite a few different ones were in there. Um, he, One of the ones that he sent me that I have smoked that I really enjoyed was the Illusione, um, uh, the Epernay, which was really good. I enjoyed that one quite a bit. I smoked that one without reviewing it. I just wanted to check it out. And that was a great cigar. He sent me um, the... Alec Bradley Kintsugi. He sent me um, a couple other ones that I'll be checking out. I may be doing a review on the Kintsugi. You guys know that if you've been following me for any amount of time, I usually don't jump on the hype, the new, the fancy bandwagon of, you know, oh, this brand new cigar came out from Tatuaje or Saka or, you know, Drew Estate or this one or that one. I don't usually jump onto that bandwagon. I'm not, not big on that. Sometimes if I'm fortunate enough to get a cigar early on before it's released or when it's being released, um, then I have done that. I did that with the Espinosa La Bomba Warhead 6, uh, which was a nub-worthy cigar just barely for me, uh, but I did enjoy it. Strong, strong vitamin N cigar. Um, I did that with the E.P. Carrillo Pledge. A lot of people know about that one. That was my number one cigar of the year for last year. Um, but I was fortunate enough to have the first video review 
out on that cigar because with Down to the Nub, we had Ernesto on, and uh, and I had a couple of them uh, sent for Down to the Nub Live because we had them, Brandon and I had them on Down to the Nub Live, and so I had it, and you know I got my review out, I think, the day before the cigar was due to hit the brick and mortar, so I was fortunate enough to do that, but I'm not a big... Like, what's the new one? I got to go out and get it and got to go and review it and all those different things. What's up, brother? I say what's up back at you, but I don't know who you are. So click up above or type in the comments who you are. Click up above StreamYard.com slash Facebook, and it will give um, StreamYard access to see your name through your Facebook profile, and then I'll know who you are. But uh, I am just... Hanging out here smoking The Clown by Don Lee Honduras Tobacco. Uh, that was part of my, I believe it was my March uh, Luggage Cigar Club core box. You guys know that I love Luggage Cigar Club. For $18.99 a month, that core box, you really can't beat it in my opinion. There are other clubs that are at higher price points that do great stuff. But Luxury Cigar Club, I have known the guys since basically just after their start. Uh, and, you know, being um, being part of the core box um group every month is something that I've enjoyed for the last three or four months now. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying it because I've heard a lot about the clown. I've heard a lot about some of the other cigars that have been in there. Some of them have been uh, winners for me. Some have been so-so and okay. But overall, um, overall, I can't complain. Uh, Just call me Zaddy. Okay, then. I will call you Zaddy with the, like, smirking emoji, I think that is. So what's up? Welcome to the live. I'm just hanging out here smoking the cigar. Um, Pseudo review and hanging out with all of you, and that's pretty much it. It's Friday, and uh, there's nobody home. My wife and my youngest son are over at the house um, that's uh, being housed at right now. And so I'm at home while my oldest son is at school. And, uh, ah, ha, ha, ha. My brother Caesar from Smoke and Lead, what is up? I hope you're doing well. I hope you are enjoying your Friday, but I figured I would just jump on and hang out with you guys today. I know last month I jumped on and uh, did a a live review for Luxury Cigar Club. Um, It's not something that, you know, I've been asked to do or anything. I just figured once a month jump on, show what uh, I'm smoking and what I'm getting from Luxury Cigar Club. There are other good clubs out there. Caesar, I know that you belong to Black Lion Luxuries. Carson, if you're still on here, I know that uh, you're a part of Black Lion Luxuries, another um, club that's out there. Obviously, there's Pravada, there's, you know, my cigar pack, my monthly cigars. There's a whole bunch of different ones out there. Um, And you know what? There's nothing wrong with being uh, a part of multiple different ones if that's what you want to do to try out and check out new cigars. I mean, uh, I'm a part of the NRA Cigar Club. um, And so I didn't know they had that until I got a flyer in the mail. And I thought, "Ah, I'll check it out for a couple months. We'll see what it's like. And it hasn't been too bad so far. I've gotten uh, one month of their uh, shipment in so far. Uh, And I think you get uh, three or four cigars. I think it's four cigars a month. Um, And so it's really not not too bad at all. And with the coupon code I had, it took it to in the $20 range. Uh, So, you know, go and check out the clubs that are out there. Um, You know that I'm partial to Lug Cigar Club. Yes, they support my channel. um, But I've supported them for a long time. Uh, Chris and Ben are two good guys. Obviously, when Dave was a part of Luxury Cigar Club, he's not anymore, but just good, good guys, good people. Um, And so, got to give them love. Caesar, are you smoking anything? I don't know if you're working, driving right now, but if you're smoking anything or if you're just hanging out at home, let me know what you got. My wife just sent me a message. I should probably check that. Mark Anthony. Hey, what do you think of the Prototipo by Matt Booth? I'm loving it. You know what? That is sitting in my humidor right over here. I have not had it yet. (coughs) That may be um, my review for next week. I'm not sure. I've got um, a couple different cigars that have been sent to me. Um, I've got the uh, Foundation Cigars Tabernacle uh, that uh, is in the box press Toro. Uh, Vitola that uh, Cigar Titan, good buddy of mine, 
sent over to me or gave to me when I was over there at his place a couple months ago that I wanted to review. I've got the Prototipo from Matt Booth uh, and a few others that I wanted to check out. I know the new uh, Casa Cuevas um, Patrimonio is on its way to me as well, and so that'll be hitting my channel uh, when I get that. Um, and a couple other new things that are coming out. Big Sky Cigars has their new Bitterroot, um, and I've got that on its way to check out and review. So I've got quite a few stuff in the lineup, but yeah, the Prototipo is one that, um, or Prototypo, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, is one that is um, in my humidor that I definitely want to check out. I will probably review it, uh, but not 100% sure. Let me take care of this. My wife sent me a message, and for any of you married folk out there, you know that paying attention to our wife is an important, valuable thing to do. So let me do this real quick here. Uh, Facebook user, I was sent the NRA Cigar Club package a couple of weeks ago. The cigars were impressive. The subscription is $40, and the four cigars I got were under $40 worth. I'll post the unboxing soon. Um, yeah, you know what, Caesar? I got uh, the one that I had had an Alec Bradley, um, I think it was not the Prince Otto. Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but it had the Prince Otto. Maybe it was the Prince Otto. Uh, and a few different ones in there. Um, there was a Hoya de Nicaragua that was in there. Um, that I personally didn't care for, uh, but, um, you know, it was my first time checking out uh, a Hoya, honestly, and uh, for what you get, I think with the coupon and everything, I had a 20% off coupon, something like that, it took it to $28 a month, and so I joined it, and uh, and yeah, you know, that was, that was my experience with it, so... Uh... Let's see if I can remember the password that I need to log in for my son. Uh, I think I got it. Maybe. Maybe. What in the world? Where's that? Evidently they make you pick images to log in that and there and sorry guys for the distraction for a moment but I promised my son I would take care of something for him and I follow through on that for my kids and Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I'm working, by the way. Yeah, I believe you are, Caesar. Good for you. Glad you're working. Enjoy your Friday, which means it's the weekend time, and especially you being two hours ahead, you're two hours closer to clocking out and enjoying your weekend, which is awesome. So, like I asked earlier, any plans for the weekend? What are you guys up to? What have you guys got going on? And, uh, yeah, I'm just here hanging out with y'all, chatting, enjoying... Uh, what I'm going to say is a good cigar, the Donnelly Honduras Tobacco, um, the Clown, it is the Barber Pole, I'll take that one off the screen there, and uh, just hanging out with you guys, let's see here, nope, I'll have to remember what the login is, because I can't right now, let my wife know, Jason, let's see here, alright brother, they're going to ride an Going to ride around and kill time. Have a great one, everyone. Thanks, Jason, for jumping on. Have a great Friday, brother. Have a safe flight back home, and uh, we'll catch you around. So, uh, uh, let's see here. This is real life, guys. That's just how it goes. But, yeah. Tons of smoke output, doing well. As I'm getting into the second third now, I'm getting that coffee's definitely there. A little more spice in it, 
It's probably a mild plus in terms of strength with the cigar. It's not very strong at all. Good full flavor. Uh, that nuttiness, that toasted peanut note is lingering. It's on the finish. It's not a super long finish, but there's a decent amount to it. But the burn, like I've pointed out a couple times, burn does well. There's a little wave to it right now, but very, very, very minor. Burn's doing well. Uh, I'm planning my birthday party going on tomorrow and get wasted till I pass out. <laughs> well, happy birthday, brother. I don't know if your birthday is tomorrow or today or in the next couple days, but happy birthday, brother. And excuse me, uh, enjoy your party. Sounds like a lot of fun. I want to ask how old you're going to be because, you know, that's just inappropriate. Even though by saying I'm not asking you, I'm asking you. But anyways, I'll let you decide if you want to answer or not. <laughs> Let's see here. I have no idea if it's going to let me in. Thank you, brother. I'm turning 20, 39 on Sunday. Hey, your birthday and my birthday are really close. I just thought about that. So we're actually super close in age. My birthday is June 3rd. So in, what, two weeks now? And I'll be 39 as well. So there you go. That's, uh, that's where I'm at. But, yes, happy birthday to you on Sunday, which is the 23rd. So, yeah, you got me beat by... I like a week and a half, almost two weeks. Yeah, must be a young man. <laughs> Val. Awesome. There you go. That's right, Caesar. Well, I will, uh, I'll be lighting up a nice cigar for you and uh, enjoy your birthday. William. Hi, Tim. I like to see you smoke with that art that only you know how to do. I am learning from you. I always buy the cigars you promote regards William. William, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I enjoy smoking cigars. It's a journey um, that that I have loved being on, and uh, you know, it's 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 one of those things that when I got into cigars, you know, 20 years ago by buying the cheap, terrible ones, that I thought, oh, this is just a fun thing. And then the last three, four years, it becoming much more of a serious thing. In the last uh, nearly three years of being in the in the game, if you will, of a cigar reviewer, when I was with Dad smoking cigars. Uh, did that for about a year and a half, uh, close to two years, actually, just shy of two years. And then my channel is actually, I think, as of the end of this month, or no, beginning of next month, is officially a year old. And so um, I've really enjoyed it. And the fact that you check out the cigars that, that I review um, and, you know, give my take on is just great because that's what cigar reviewers should be here for uh, and should be promoting is whether or not we enjoy the cigar. It's you, like I tell on every single one of my videos at the end, enjoy your cigar journey because that's what it's about. It's about enjoying your cigar journey. It's not about me saying I'm the only way that you uh, should base your cigar purchases off of or you know I've got the best palate. It's not any of that at all. It's purely this is what I have smoked. Here's my take on it, and you know anything other than that, it's it's just up to all of you. You know whether or not you want to check them out and do that. Um, and, and after that, I leave it up to, to everybody and to the viewers. Um, my channel in the last year that I've had it has grown, um, I would say, quite well, um, you know, comparatively from where I was with Dad Smoking Cigars. Uh, and part of it, uh, you know, just must be the content. It must be just the, the style that I have. I mean, I love my studio. This is a, a sound dampening pad here on the wall. <clears throat> um, you know, acoustically, different things. I've, I've really been intentional about having high quality content from my microphone that I got, you know, eight, nine months ago to a number of different things. And I just enjoy putting out content. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, Val says it's a process that most cigar smokers go through. I'm still on my journey and I'll always be on my journey. 
Um, it's never going to be a point where it's like, okay, I've arrived. I've made it. You know, I'm, I'm good. Um, because that's just not how I view it. That's not how I look at it. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, I will always be on this journey of enjoying cigars because I enjoy it that much. I, I love cigars and people have asked me and I've said it before, you know, on a previous live and, you know, maybe in a different review, I think I mentioned it also. People have asked me, you know, what's, what's your end game? You know, my, my good friend, Ron Real wants to be a blender and he's doing things and his channel's changing and he's adjusting and, and, you know, working towards that. Um, and, and I think it's awesome. Um, but, uh, um, but you know, it, it's, for me, it's, it's just been about reviewing cigars and, um, Ooh, let's see here. Uh, it's, it's purely about reviewing cigars. That's what it comes down to for me. Um, and so there, there is no end game. I'm, I'm at the end game. I enjoy reviewing cigars and there's been quite a bit of chatter about, you know, the, the platform that many of you are chatting on right now with the, uh, you know, red icon of, you know, cracking down on, on tobacco channels and cigar channels. And, you know, I've seen some of the, some of the cautions go out to a couple different channels and I've heard of it from some, you know, friends of mine in the industry that are having, you know, channels being, you know, um, sort of put on hold or, you know, you're, you're in the penalty box, things like that. Um, I don't know how things are going to change or when they're going to change or any of those things at all. Um, but I'm just here to put out content. There are, you know, a couple other platforms that, uh, um, that I've, that I've, toyed with i do have all of my videos up on a platform called uh, odyssey and so you know if you want to um, follow me over there you're more than welcome to it's o-d-y-s-e-e dot -E com uh, and then you just search cigar show tim all of my videos that i put up here on youtube are all there and available as well um, it automatically you know puts it over there's some functionality like going live that they don't have yet to my knowledge or at least it's not in the place where it it makes the most sense uh, to try and navigate but um, but yeah you know I don't know when things are going to change or get cracked down more here on this platform but uh, but I'm I'm just going to continue putting out content and if if it gets cracked down and the channel gets shut down or whatever it is, I'm a smaller channel. I don't have 3,000, 4,000, 5, 6, 10, 12,000, you know, 100,000 followers, you know, like other much larger channels that are out there. <clears throat> I'm sitting in the 600s right now, and um, I don't think I'm going to be on much of any kind of a radar at all unless it just becomes a blanket thing. And so, you know, I'm going to be on here as, as long as the platform allows it, uh, and then things will just transfer over to another platform and yeah, will the, the content not be there in the comments and different things like that? Yeah. You know, I don't do this for monetization. I don't do this for any of those reasons. My channel's not large enough to monetize yet anyways. And so I'm just along the journey and it's, you know, it's, it's me putting out content, but it's also me um, just sort of having a, a log, a video diary of, of my cigar journey and sharing it with all of you. Uh, Val says, to me, the journey is learning and developing my cigar palette then to discover the nuances of the cigar and the and appreciating the blend of the cigar and the taste I get. But that's just me. You know what? And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> CST, you're on my radar. Uh, I appreciate that. You know, and it's funny. Um, and I think Ron really was the, the first one that started uh, calling me that. Um, you know, CST. Uh, he's called me that a few different times. And you do, Val, and some other people. Um, and I, you know, it, it's a whole lot easier than getting out the mouthful of, I mean, like up here, you know, cigar show tim um easy abbreviation easy way to do it and it works for me uh you know people have said why did you why did you come up with uh you know cigar show tim and frankly there are there are other tims in the industry there's tim swanson there's you know uh, tim wong there's you know a lot of others that are in the industry uh and uh you know it's just one of those things where i wanted to be you know a name that was separated from them the show just because of you know having a youtube show if you will a youtube channel um and uh wanting to put on you know cigar events and different things that was just the name that came out uh vincent uh okay got it you know what let's see hey you know 
you're 18, that, that's great. Um, my channel is technically for 21 and older. It does have that disclaimer there. Um, I can't encourage you to go and buy tobacco. That is not what I'm doing. Um, it is for those 21 years and older, as the law states. And so, you know, um, I, I wish you the best. Uh, but, you know, I, I can't influence or ask you to do anything that obviously, um, you know, the FDA and others have said is, is not um, what someone your age should be um, purchasing and, and doing yet. So um, thanks for stopping by. But, you know, I, I really can't encourage or, or do anything other than that. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Dingus McSwain, I've been hearing more and more out of the uh, YTPC, uh, that we need to find a new platform before it gets worse. You know, that, that's, that's what I've been hearing. I've been talking with quite a few of my cigar review friends, whether it be cigar prop, whether it be Ron real, whether it be Lee Mac, whether it be a number of different people, um, that, you know, crackdowns are happening, you know, different things are going on. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is for the time being. That's just really what it comes down to. And, um, and so we'll, uh, we'll be here as long as, as long as the platform allows it is really what it comes down to. Uh, and so, so that's, that's just my take on it. You know, I'll be here as long as the platform allows me to be here. And when, when that day comes, if that day comes where it gets cracked down on, um, I know Ron did a live video yesterday where he thinks that it's, it's, you know, inevitable, it's going to be coming for tobacco and, um, you know, alcohol and, and firearms and different things that are all being regulated, that it's, it's going to be coming. Um, and I appreciate that dingus. Thank you so much. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, they have the right to, um, restrict because they own the platform. And they, they can decide what is allowed on that platform. I mean, they have different protective measures in there for, for minors and for kids and for different things like that. And it's their platform, guys. At the end of the day, it is. And so am I here to argue it and say that they're doing something they shouldn't? No, I'm on, I'm, again, I'm on their platform. I didn't create the platform. I don't run the platform. I don't make those decisions. Uh, but I am here to put out content on their platform as long as they allow me to be on the platform with all the other reviewers um tim swanson cigars daily got his new platform maybe reach out to him and ask for his insight yeah he built his own platform so cigars daily uh, plus is his new platform his website that he has so that he can have all of his content in one spot um i will tell you that i'm in the process of building a website <clears throat> um that uh is forming as a a media company if you will uh, where all of my videos uh, eventually will be or at least will direct to a different platform to go and view all of those videos. It is in the works uh, because I want to do my due diligence and be able to have a backup plan. So it is in the process, um, Val, that I'm, I'm building my own website. Um, I, I'm not in a point now where I'm going to release what the name of the website is or different things like that, but uh, things are... Uh, in the works for having a, a another location where my content can be um, can be viewed and is available. Oh, there we go. It worked. Still working on getting the stuff for my son. Uh, there we go. That and here. Um, so that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Val, breaking news from CST. I got it first. Yes, there is a new platform that is going to be coming where all of my stuff will be. Um, I'm still working on all of it. There, there's really no, um, answer on the time frame or when I'm going to reveal what all of that is. Um, but, but I'm working on it. There will be reviewers that unfortunately will be left in the dark and everything will be lost. I mean, look at what happened with Brian Glynn with cigar obsession when they demonetized it drastically changed his income and what he you know does and and what he's is able to do and so um you know financially yeah he's got a photography business that he runs and does that as well but um you know it it, it put a big big damper on him on delicia cigar vix and on others that um were 
um, monetized that had significant info coming out for it. So, <laughs> Val, I should get a sticker for that. Um, <clears throat> Val, you know what? Send me a DM uh, at Cigar Show Tim on Instagram. Send me a DM with your address. I'd be happy to send you out a sticker, a couple stickers, no problem whatsoever. And uh, shoot me your address, and I'd love to get that in the mail for you. No problem at all. If any of you want a sticker, let me know. I'm more than happy to send them out to you. You know, I, I have them for just fun and people, if they want to put them on their humidor or put them on a refrigerator or whatever it is, I got them. So that's totally fine. Send me a DM with your address, and I'd love to shoot that out your way. Um, oh, I thought there's no, nope, just that. I probably let the cigar go out from talking so much. Let's go there. Yep, I did. Where's my lighter? There it is. Oh, there you go, Val. You're working on a project and you need stickers. Well, you know what? I can take care of that. So send me a DM on my Instagram, at Cigar Show Tim. <clears throat> send me your address. I'd be happy to send you some stickers. No problem at all. Uh, look that off there. Uh, my cigar is doing fine. Keep talking, CST. <laughs> there you go. And you lit up, what was it, a Sweet Jane? Is that what you lit up? I gotta go back through the comments here and see. I don't remember. I think you lit up a Sweet Jane um, from the Deadwood series, from Deadwood Tobacco. Uh, Leather Rose, there you go. Oh no, Jason said Leather Rose was his favorite. Fat Bottom Betty, there we go. Fat Bottom Betty is what you lit up. Glad it is going well for you. And I still got plenty of cigar here, so I'll be hanging out with you guys until, you know, you all jump off and abandon me. <laughs> Just kidding. So deep into the second third now, toasted toasted nuttiness is still very prevalent, very prominent in the flavor notes. Yeah, Fat Bottom Betty, there you go. Um, toasted, you know, not really peanuts anymore like it was, but just a, a toasted nuttiness is a prominent flavor. And there's actually, just right there on the finish, just a, a smooth, like just pure tobacco taste very clean not bitter not anything james you haven't gotten bored yet good i'm glad i know it doesn't take much to entertain you so i'll, I'll just take the compliment that you haven't gotten bored yet <laughs> you know what? do something for me guys so everybody can see in the comments what are some of the other cigar reviewers that you watch? I mean, I could name reviewer after reviewer after reviewer. Some are good friends of mine. Some I just, you know, have watched and checked out. Some channels I care for. Some channels I don't. But that's what is nice about all of us reviewers that are out there. Um, is we're not for everybody, but there is a channel out there, or multiple channels out there that we enjoy. You know, whether it's mine, whether it's, I mean, you could go on the big scale and go Brian Glenn Cigar Obsession. You can go on a an even larger scale and go to Jeremy Sires, uh, you know, his after hours where he does all of his cigar stuff, bear on leaf. I mean, you can go to a lot of different people uh, and, uh, and, and their channels, but what are some of the cigar reviewers that all of you watch? I know Ash had cigar uh, junkie TV was on earlier. There's um, Ash head uh, or there's um, cigar head, Fred, there's Ron, there's cigar prop. There's, <clears throat> Delicia, there's Brian Glenn, there's, you know, Tim Swanson, yeah, reviews because he's got Cigars Daily, Brad Reith reviews because he's got Zeal, um, there's Smoke and Lead, there's High Desert Man, Vic Evans, there's, um, uh, oh, what's his name, his last name, Adam Swanson, who's actually, you know, an up-and-comer, very casual in his garage, but honestly, the, the, the way that he reviews cigars, his content, if you haven't checked out Adam Swanson, I'd recommend going and checking him out. 
um, his last video where he did sort of like a, um, a pan up and over the cigar that he was smoking was a really cool intro to it. Yeah, Bob the Cigar Guy. Brett Kelly, what's going on, brother? Hope you're doing well. Bob the Cigar Guy, Cigar Prop, Martina Maya. Um, again, like I said, I could go on and on mentioning. Uh, Adam Swanson's an, another one. I think he's at a mid-200s in subscribers. Go and check him out. I will give him a shout-out because I enjoy his content. Very laid back. Um, and does he have the, the greatest studio? Does he have the greatest set? No. But you know what? It, it's, uh, it's who he is, and the content is what's important to me. And he... Um, he just gives his honest take in a really cool, humble way. Um, yeah, right, Brett. You know, the two more that I mentioned, Zeal, Cigar Vixen. There are tons of channels out there um, that people watch. And, um, you know, some of them, like I said, some of them I like what they're doing. Some of them I don't care for their content. Some of them that I used to watch when I first started doing reviews and, and got more serious about cigars, I don't watch anymore. It doesn't make them a bad channel. I just don't watch them anymore. Um, and I won't bother saying who they are because it doesn't matter because there are a ton of channels out there. Great smoke output from this. For those just joining, I know it probably says it or does say it in the title of the video, but this is the uh, Donnelly Honduras Tobacco, the clown. This is the barber pole uh, in Toro size. And I have been enjoying it so far. Uh, and I've heard quite a bit about this. A lot of people said, oh, it's a great cigar. you got to check it out. And I just hadn't done it yet. And then when it came in my um, March Luxury Cigar Club core box, it was like, you know what? This is perfect because I haven't picked it up yet. And now I get to check it out. So I got responses from two people on what channels. Oh, you know what, Val? I did not see yours. I apologize. Val says... <clears throat> Lee Mac 912, Ron Real, Martina Maya, Cowboyism, uh, SSA. Val, who is SSA? Enlighten me on that. I don't know who that abbreviation stands for, and uh, forgive me for that. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know who that is. So, Val, let me know who SSA is, because I'm curious whether I already, you know, follow them, have checked them out, um, or... I've never heard of them and should check them out. You know, and then there's the podcast type shows. You know, obviously being part of Down to the Nub right here, we have transitioned significantly from what um, we have transitioned significantly from what we started as a cigar podcast live show to being a faith based, faith centered um, podcast strictly, no more live shows, you know, weekly. Um, and, and I'm, I'm loving that, uh, to, you know, Cigar Authority, to um, a lot of different ones that are out there that are podcast style. Uh, there's just a lot to choose from. Yeah, James, I totally get it. <clears throat> and Val, yes, Tony. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Soy Sauce Assassin. Yes, there we go, SSA. Tony from SSL, Soy Sauce Assassin. James, yes, I used to watch many more, but SSL has gotten to be a full-time job. I totally get it with Tony going live. Uh, what was two times a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays to him just popping up and doing lives uh, whenever he feels like it, which is great. I mean, that's that's what this is. I just thought, hey, today I'll go live, and why not? Um, but there's a lot going on with the uh, SSL group, which is awesome. How many of you have tried this cigar? How many of you have tried the Clown? Whether you tried this one, the Double Maduro... How many of you guys have checked it out? I'm curious your thoughts on it. I'm getting down to the band, which is a massive band. Burn's gone a little bit sideways on me, just a little bit of a wave to it. So I would slide the band up, but then the band would, frankly, be at the cap of the cigar and in my mouth, and I am not a fan of that. So I'm going to take this off. I was trying to slide it up, and it wasn't working. Let's see if I can get it to come off clean. No, it's tearing a little bit. Let's see. Yep, it tore. And I know people that when they go to take off a band, if it tears like this and shreds, they're like, oh, it must not have been a good cigar. You know, must not be a good brand or good company because they don't pay attention to all the quality. You know what? Disregard all that, in my opinion. If you like the cigar, like the cigar. If you judge the cigar by the band, then you're in it for the wrong reasons anyways.
There you go, Val. I really like the random visits. You know what? So do I. I enjoy just the random jumping on, hanging out with everybody. Um, <clears throat> it's fun. James, yeah, got to keep them all in line. I totally agree. There are, ta there are days where people need to be corralled and kept in line, not because anybody's doing anything dumb, but just because of the nature of the group and, and how it is. And Tony puts his heart and soul into that group. <clears throat> so what would you all want to see me cover on my channel? I know I kind of mentioned it a little bit ago, and then my ADD had a squirrel moment. Um, what cigars would you like me to cover, review, or things that you, cigars that you've heard about that you'd love to see from my perspective? Uh, Val says, sometimes <clears throat> the wrapper just sticks. It happens. Yep, sometimes it does stick. That's how it goes. Brett, yep, you nailed it. Nothing to do with the cigar. The roller used too much glue. Plain and simple. That's how it goes. James, I hate it when cigar bands tear, not because it's a sign of a bad cigar, but because I usually end up tearing the wrapper, getting them off. You know what? And that happens. I usually try to slide the, the band off as it warms up, um, so it makes it easier to slide without peeling back the wrapper on the cigar. It wasn't happening this time. I didn't want it, be, especially being a barber pole, didn't want to risk messing up the wrapper on the, uh, <clears throat> on the cigar. But yeah, I... Uh, let it go till it gets warmed up from the uh, foot of the cigar as it's burning, and hopefully that loosens up the glue. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. This time it just didn't, and that's just how it goes sometimes. All well. So the spice on it is not spicery level by any means, but it is ramping up. Really strong, like, coffee cream note coming in now. Really strong coffee cream note, and it's very good. Now, I, I don't put cream in my coffee. I never have. I'm not a fan of it. <clears throat> you know, in college, I'd go through the gas station and get the little, you know, French vanilla, push the button and let it fill up the cup kind of stuff. Um, and in some ways, it reminds me a lot of that. So, you know, a, a real creamy coffee note is what I'm getting out of the cigar right now but i am enjoying it it's been a good cigar the body of it it's 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 full full bodied full flavored is what i mean by body not strength strength and body are two different things um but the strength of this i'd say is a good good you know medium barely touching into medium not strong i'm not sitting here going whoa this is getting strong nothing like that at all but a good solid <clears throat> uh, mild plus medium cigar as far as the strength of it right now Got a nice cherry on it. Nice glow to it. That's where the burn is right now. Just a little bit of a dip and a wave to it. It's probably the most the burn has been off the entire time I've been smoking it. As I'm getting to the tail end of the second third, getting ready to transition into the final third of it. So for anybody that watched the drink debate, eight-week series, what was your thought on it? Which did you enjoy last time I went live? Um, <coughs> um, I had a lot of fun doing that series. Um, Espinoza sponsored it when I reached out to Jack and said, Hey, I'm looking to do the series. What would you think of Espinoza being the cigar that gets the, uh, gets the, <coughs> the, the duty of, of being reviewed seven weeks in a row, which was the intention, which turned into eight weeks because a number of people said, Hey, Rum, Axel Rodriguez was one of them. You know, check out rum, check out rum. So I did. Uh, and it was a very unique experience, I got to say. Uh, but, you know, it was it was a fun series to do. I enjoyed it quite a bit. But did any of you have a specific um, pairing that, that you were surprised by, uh, that you, you uh, didn't expect to get the results or the flavor notes uh, out of it that I got? Or anything like that. And how many of you have had the Espinosa Habano? It's a great go-to stick for me. I really enjoy it. And uh, um, it was one of the reasons when I reached out to Jack. It was like, hey, I'd love to have Espinosa be the, the brand that's represented. And, uh, you know, he said, absolutely. We'd love the exposure for, 
you know, all those weeks on your channel. What cigar would, would you like? You know, and I could have asked for a number of different Espinosa cigars, but I went with a good trusty one for me. Went with the Habano in the, um, they call it, it's the Habano number no. four. Uh, it's just a little bit longer than a Robusto. Um, and so that's technically why it's not a Robusto because it's longer than five inches. It's a five and a half um, by 52, uh, but a great, great cigar. Uh, James says that got a box of them, half gone already. There you go. Val says it was a good series, the wine, because I'm not a wine drinker. Interesting. Okay. So, and I've had other people tell me that I, I don't typically pair cigars with wine. This is what people have told me. But it was interesting to hear that perspective on that um, specific one. I think that was the second one in the series because the first one uh, I paired it with uh, was coffee. Uh, and then I went to wine. Uh, and I got a really, really good Syrah from uh, up in the Santa Inez area from, um, uh, not Santa Barbara, no, it was Santa Inez, yeah, from Santa Inez uh, up in that area, and uh, um, it was just really, really good. Solvang is actually where the winery is technically located. It's called Rideau Winery, um, and it was a really, really good Syrah. But yeah, I enjoyed the wine episode, and it surprised me how much the wine had an influence on the cigar um, I mean, the, the berry notes, the, the jam, um, because the, the, um, the stronger flavor profile of the wine having an influence on that cigar, but I really enjoyed that wine episode and the bottle of wine was just really good. I'm getting into the final third now. And the flavor notes are staying pretty much the same as the second third. That pretty strong, you know, cream coffee note is there. Sort of a toasted bread note starting to come through now, maybe because of the coffee, you know, adjusting it a little bit. But, uh, um, but that's what I'm getting on it. Uh, I'm going to binge watch the series tomorrow. The rum was interesting too. Yeah, that rum was interesting. I got the Florida Cana. I think it's the 10 year that I got. Um, really good rum, not a super expensive one. Uh, but the fact that that rum is sealed with um, banana leaves absolutely played a role in the flavor notes that I picked up in the cigar with getting that sort of um, banana chip, fried you know, banana, fried plantain kind of earthy fruit note. Uh, was really interesting and unexpected for me. Um, but I did enjoy it because it just gave a different variety uh, to it. And, you know, one of the things that I was curious about going into it was how much is the drink really going to affect it? And I know that different drinks can affect a cigar, but intentionally spending those eight weeks having the same cigar <clears throat> with the same conditions, I mean, all in my humidor, you know, humidity, temperature, all staying where it needed to, but also with the... Um, not having a big meal, not having something that influences outside from having a spicy food or anything like that leading up to it. It was very interesting seeing um, how different that cigar could be. But then on some of the more traditional drinks that a lot of cigar enthusiasts enjoy with their cigars, whether it be coffee, whether it be bottled water, mineral water, <clears throat> or you know whiskey, whether it's a bourbon or a scotch or different things like that, and, and those can all be different bourbons and scotches, especially depending on where the region is where that scotch came from, um, all playing an, an effect or having, an, you know, an effect on the cigar notes. But, you know, having the, the more traditional drinks and getting very similar flavor notes to the way that, um, to the way that the, the you know, manufacturer, the way that Espinosa intended it with that blend uh, and some of the other um, websites that I referred to with their flavor notes, uh, with the tastings and different things like that, um, it was very clear to see that the the mineral water, bottled water, um, coffee, uh, and you know some of the notes with whiskey were were the drinks that uh, absolutely helped the cigar shine in the way that the manufacturer intended it. Uh, Val, that's what I thought. It was good. Uh, same cigar. Uh, it was good. The same cigar. Yeah, it's one of those things that you have to if you're going to do something like that. You. You've got to control the um, control the conditions, control 
what happens in that testing, in that in that you know review, so that you can have the same process go through all of it. Otherwise, it's it's not a fair assessment of that cigar and, and the pairing of it. You know, and you hear people. I mean, Martin Amaya. I'm not going to harp on him. He loves pairing with Dr Pepper. He loves his Topo Chico. He loves his mineral water, uh, and he goes back and forth. You know, and then there are others that. Uh, Jeremy Sires, when he has his cigars, he's always got a whiskey with him. You know, it, it, it's a matter of enjoying the drink that you want with your cigar. That's really what it comes down to is the way that you enjoy the cigars, stick with it. This was just a test, and I was um, intrigued by it. It was a conversation, a topic that had come up uh, with some of the different cigar friends that I have, and I just thought, you know what, I want to do this. Uh, and the idea was out there a couple months before the discussion really even started, and then the discussion came up, and it was just sort of a solidification of, okay, I need to do that. Um, and so that was the you know the um, confirmation that I wanted to do that series, and I enjoyed it. And it, it's interesting because that series had less views <clears throat> than my traditional reviews. I mean, you can go back and look at my channel and look at all the different videos and see where I was tracking with a traditional cigar review compared to um, doing that series and the viewership dropped. So either it wasn't a series that a lot of people were interested in or didn't pick up in the algorithms or whatever it is. Um, but I've noticed other reviewers have said that they had a dip for a season in the number of views on their videos, whether YouTube is changing how easily, you know, searchable it is, whatever the case may be. Um, but I enjoyed the series. I'm not here to get a billion views and, you know, have a channel that explodes. I'm here to just enjoy what I do. Uh, but it was a lot of fun doing that series. And I'm mixing it up on my channel, like with doing the pipes um, <clears throat> that I did this week. Um, I'm going to be mixing it up and doing some different things on my channel. Not because other people are doing it, but because I just want to keep diversifying what I do on my channel. I mean, I did the studio equipment with my microphone, with the audio interface and the different things that I use here. Um, you just have to keep evolving. That's really what it comes down to. You look at Lee Mac's early stuff and what he's doing now, and the style has changed uh, a little bit. He stayed true to who he is, but the style has changed. What he's doing has adjusted over time because it has to. You look at Cigar Prop. You look at um, Brian Glenn. You look at you know all these different people. They they've uh, adjusted different things to stay current with what they're doing. Uh, Val, yeah, absolutely. Um, the cigar was the control point, and it needed to be the control point. Otherwise, it's not a fair assessment of how a drink can affect it. If I would have changed and gone from the Espinosa Habano to, um, you know, the Room 101 farce that I, you know, did on the, the live last month from Luxury Cigar Club to, you know, <clears throat> different things, it wouldn't have been a fair assessment of how, you know, drink pairings can um, play a role in your cigar. And drinks aren't the only thing that affect your cigar. Obviously, humidity and temperature affect it. Who you're around affects it. Your attitude, your mentality, all those different things can affect um, your take on a cigar. That nut note, nutty note is coming back more in this final third as I'm definitely into the final third now that that strong nutty flavor note is coming through in some ways it's it's almost the coffee and the creaminess and the nuttiness it's almost like like a, a hazelnut coffee kind of <clears throat> tone that I'm, I'm getting on the cigar now which is really interesting because I'm not a fan of hazelnut coffee at all I just don't care for it um, but with the cigar there's that that pure tobacco flavor note that is still lingering in the background as well I am enjoying it. It's good. The strength on it is definitely good solid medium now. It started off as a <clears throat> a mild, mild plus, uh, ramped up to a medium, like I said, in the second, third, and it's getting to a, uh, not a medium plus, but a good solid medium now. I think I said medium plus a second ago, but strength-wise, <clears throat> of the cigar, I would say that it's it's definitely good solid medium right now. And pairing it with the after show blend has been really good. Ooh, James, good question. Box worthy or just a five pack worthy? Um, you know, for me and for my palate, liking nuttiness, liking coffee notes, liking and there's no caramel in this, but liking the nuttiness and coffee notes. Um. <clears throat> 
I would say if you're in that wheelhouse like I am of a good medium cigar that's got nuttiness and coffee notes and things like that, some of the lighter cream notes like you would expect more in a Connecticut, um, I would say this is probably a box-worthy cigar. Uh, and not many cigars for me are box-worthy, uh, but this one, um, I mean, for as of right now with the experience and everything, I, this is a nub-worthy cigar for me. Um, I would say it's box-worthy because it's one that price point-wise – is not crazy expensive. Uh, in fact, I'll look up right now uh, what it is. I'll pull it up on my phone. Um, price point. They're not crazy expensive cigars. Um, let's see what they go for. Uh, let's see here. You can get them for like frontline cigars. Steve with Frontline is a good guy. He's a good buddy of mine. <clears throat> and he is sold out of them. I don't know if he has a price. So a, a box of them uh, for a box of 20 is $205 US dollars. So you're looking at, you know, barely over um, $10. Uh, and that's for the double Maduro. Um, you're looking at barely over $10 a cigar. You, 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 you can't go wrong with it. Um, let's see here if Luxury Cigar Club, which obviously I got it in the box, Let's see what their price is. Um, a five pack is fifty-four dollars and forty-five cents at Luxury Cigar Club. A box of twenty of them is two dollars and seventeen cents, and or two dollar two hundred seventeen dollars and eighty cents. So you know you're looking at a little over ten dollars a cigar. I don't think that that's a problem at all to spend on this cigar. I think it's definitely worth the ten dollars. It's it's worth the price for it. Um, so that's my take on it. Uh, Val, my next cigar up is the Oliva Connecticut uh, and MEA's beverage. Yeah, Martina Maya's beverage, Topo Chico. That guy is trying really hard and wants to get Topo Chico to sponsor his channel. If it happens, I think it's a great thing for him because I know that he drinks it a ton uh, and he enjoys it a lot. That's his go-to. Um, but, uh, yeah, not a bad pairing. I mean, I had a Topo Chico last night. I mean, there you go. I enjoy Topo Chico. I, I like um, um, San what is it San Pellegrino. I like that. It's a good one. It's not as as carbonated as Topo Chico. Topo Chico is a very carbonated mineral water. If I want something good and carbonated, I'll go to the Topo Chico. If I want just a nice mineral water with a cigar, then I go with the um, um, San Pellegrino, a good one that's uh, um, again not as carbonated. So it's a, a different. Um, experience with the drink. Both of them are good. I mean, you can go with the Perrier like I did with the Mineral Water Review. Again, that's not a very carbonated one as well. Topo Chico is probably the most carbonated of the mineral waters in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I enjoy Topo Chico, so great pairing there, Val. Well, I'm going to only be on for a few more minutes with you guys, and I'll finish the cigar up on my own. <clears throat> but I just wanted to hang out with all of you for a while. I've been on for about an hour and 18 minutes now. Just wanted to hang out with whoever wanted to join me and jump on and hang out while I uh, smoke the cigar to see whether I enjoy it or not. So, James, I hope that helps out with whether it's uh, just five-pack or a box-worthy. I would say it's box-worthy to have in your humidor um, and, you know, enjoy it as you go. Um, I'd say it absolutely is a box-worthy cigar. So before I jump off, any questions that you guys have for me, anything coming up, I always want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to <clears throat> ask me any questions, my take on any cigars um, that I've had. I know a, a big cigar that went around for a while that a lot of people talked about that I think hit some of the, the ratings for the year um, was the Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real. Um, I had that one actually when I was hanging out with Vic Evans up at Calibra um, cigar lounge here in Ontario, California, and I enjoyed it. It was a good cigar. It wasn't a wowie for me, but it was a very good cigar. <clears throat> nice visit. There you go. Good answer. Perfect. Well, there you go. So that's, that's my take on it, James. That's, that's where I would put the cigar. Um, if your flavor palette is with what I was describing, I'd say it's absolutely a box worthy cigar for $10 a stick. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with it. If it was a you know eleven twelve dollars, that's where it gets iffy, and I know it's just under the eleven dollar price point. 
Um, but if it was a, a twelve dollar cigar, my take would be, you know, probably five pack only. Uh, but at the ten dollar range, I don't think you can go wrong with it going with a box, uh, because there are many other cigars <clears throat> in the the ten dollar range that I don't think are um, box worthy. Um, but I definitely would say that this one is. So like I did last month, uh, and I let you know you guys all pick what I smoked last month. You guys all said the Room 101 Farce um, Lancero, and so I smoked that one. My goal each month is to uh, come on here with a Luxury Cigar Club cigar um, that's in the core box, let you guys hear my take on it without doing a formal review, and just sit down and hang out with all of you uh, and, and just smoke the cigar and give you my thoughts on it. Um, the ones that came in Luxury Cigar Club for May, I posted a picture on my Instagram if you, you want to see what they were or what they are. Uh, the Prototipo from Matt Booth um, is in there. Um, there's uh, a Crux Redline that's in there. And then the third one that was in there, I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, I don't remember what it was. I'll have to go onto my Instagram now and see what it was. But I love the core box. I love what they offer each month. I love what they have, um, and so it's just been it's been great being a part. Oh, it was the Romacraft Aquitaine, which was on this week's review. Um, I enjoyed the Aquitaine. That was a nubworthy cigar for me. Good solid cigar, um, and that was um, basically you could call it a. Um, I mean, it was essentially a Robusto size, but you could call it a Perfecto in its shape. That was what it was. I enjoyed it. Here's the burn on this. It has straightened itself out. It is pretty much razor straight now, going all the way around. Good cigar. <clears throat> but I think that's going to wrap it up, everybody. I'm going to jump off. I've got some coffee to roast, got some things to take care of. Um, but I want to thank everybody for jumping on, hanging out with me on this, you know, live hangout smoke session on this uh, Friday midday afternoon, late morning, whatever you want to call it, or evening where you are, James, in Germany. But thanks for jumping on, everybody. I hope you have a great Friday. Um, have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, I will catch you guys up next. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, chances are you are because you got the notification that I went live. <clears throat> and then if you want to join the Facebook group that I have uh, where you know I post my reviews, um, and, and what I've got going on, you can, uh, on Facebook, it's the, uh, Cigar Show Tim Family Room, you can check it out there, I'd love to have you join, I think we've got 160 something people in there, post your cigars, it's not exclusive where, you know, oh, you can only post about these cigars, or this club, or, you know, that manufacturer, post your cigars, post what you're smoking, um, and, you know, sometimes I post different industry news, things like that. But if you want to check that out, go and uh, search on Facebook for the Cigar Show Tim. Um, Cigar Show Tim Family Room is what it's called. And I'd love to have you be a part of it if you're on Facebook. But I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, absolutely, Val. Thank you for your time as well. Enjoy your uh, next cigar. And uh, I think that's going to do it. So take care, everybody. As I say, enjoy your cigar journey. I'm Cigar Show Tim, as always. I'll see ya.